Hey everyone, Adam D here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about access control. And specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the concept of access control so we can understand the mechanisms that our computers implement. And access control is one of those things that may kind of seem like this high level theoretical concept. But when you actually start digging into it, you see that like so much of our security systems uh, from computers to all kinds of security actually rely on access control. And so to kind of understand that, let's go through an example. So as I'm going through this and talking about the example, I want you to be thinking about, hmm, actually, what what are the different uh, who has access to what here? So in this example, let's say a university could be your university. In this example, it could be our university, Arizona State University. The university has an academic integrity policy that every student follows that disallows cheating. Seems pretty standard. Most universities have something like this. If you haven't looked up your universities, I highly recommend going checking it out. Usually you can literally just Google for school name, academic integrity policy uh, to see exactly what they mean. So this is pretty standard. You have a university, they have some kind of academic integrity policy that says, hey, students aren't allowed to cheat. Um, and this includes copying homework with or without permission. This is another standard thing. Um, so you could think that, hey, um, you know, people copying, we shouldn't, you know, what, what's the point of all this, right? Maybe you've never thought about this. Maybe you're just diligently doing your work. You never think about uh, why some of these policies exist in the first place. Of course, one of the key things is we want to make sure that students are actually doing their own work, right? And so that is um, because the, the work that we're assigning, as you know, as you're going through these Pwn College modules, these are building up skills. The point isn't just to get you to solve busy work, but actually to develop skills that are going to be very useful to you as you go out in your career. Um, so some class, so uh, let's say a CSE is a computer, um, basically a computer science class at Arizona State University. So it has students do homework on some kind of shared server. Um, this is actually more similar to um, general.asu.edu. Uh, this is something that if you're an ASU student, you have access to. It's a shared server where everybody's on the same system. This is definitely different than the Pwn College system because when you get access to and you SSH into the Pwn College system or you access it through the web interface, you're in your own custom environment and you can't even see anyone else doing anything. But on this server, they're on a shared custom, uh, on a shared server, so they all have access. They can... Um, see that there are different users' accounts, and um, and so this is kind of our, our setup here. Now, some student, student A, forgets to read protect their homework file. So they're working in their homework directory. They're working on a solution to a homework assignment. Maybe it's a big multi-week, you think four-week coding assignment for a compiler's class, and they accidentally, let's say, made the file uh, readable by other users. And then student B identifies this, copies the file into their home directory, and then submits the file as their own to the system. And of course, the instructors are doing what the instructors should do. They're looking for similar files that students submit, and they identify and see that actually student uh, B and student A submitted the same file. And kind of the key thing, what I want you to be thinking about, and maybe um, in the video, you can put something in the comments of who does something wrong here? Who is in the wrong, student B or student A? And I think it's very easy. A lot of people can kind of automatically look at and say, well, clearly student B is in the wrong because they copied the file, right? And it seems like knowingly. So they knowingly copied a file from a student that was for a specific homework assignment and then submitted that as their own. Therefore, they're in the wrong. But what about student A? Is student A in the wrong? Did they do something wrong? Um, and if we go back and look at our academic integrity policy, well, it says copying homework with or without permission. Um, and this could even include, so uh, if you give someone your homework assignment that they copy from, both students are usually liable and can get in trouble by the academic integrity policy because that constitutes an academic integrity violation, aka cheating. And so the the thing to think about here is, well, but in this case, you know, student A just forgot to read protect their homework uh, file. Um, but how do we distinguish the case where they forget to read protect the file? Or maybe they intentionally left it open to be readable 
because they were collaborating with student B and just said, oh, yeah, my file's in there. Just go copy it and you'll be good to go. Um, and then in that case, they are liable. So how does an institution, how do you distinguish those two cases? And furthermore, should you even um, actually distinguish those two cases? Uh, that's, I think, another important thing. Maybe student A didn't intend to do it. And yet, because of their... Um, insecure, let's say, access control policy because they didn't follow uh, the policy of protecting their homework assignments and on this system that then allowed student B to copy their file, maybe they should be liable and get in trouble with the academic integrity policy. So this is something to definitely think about. I actually, um, this is a not just a high level example. This comes from a real world example where I had a student who um, there were three students that all uh, had submitted assignments that were very similar. I started digging into it, talked to the students, and I find out that one of the students had, after the assignment deadline, had posted their code on GitHub, um, and the other students found that code and submitted it after the deadline for a late penalty, but ultimately just submitted that code exactly as it was. And, you know, we had to uh, talk about it, and this was exactly something that came out of that. Well, who's liable, right? Because the student should not have been posting their code publicly, especially when it's A, ever and be in that time window. Um, so anyways, this is something to get us thinking about access control and how important this kind of thing is. You can see that in this case, we're just talking about homework and homework assignments. But if you're talking about uh, data at a corporation and very sensitive data that is readable by everyone in the company that maybe shouldn't have access to that or shouldn't doesn't need access to that data, um, that can lead to data leaks and all kinds of crazy stuff. So. So what we want to get into, and in this video, we're going to talking about concepts. So we kind of set up with this example. Um, the other concepts that come up in access control are authorization, um, which is trying to answer the question of what can you do on the system? What are you authorized to do on the system? Versus something that we'll be talking about in other modules, not this module, authentication. So how do we actually know you are who you say you are? If you think about it for a little bit and you realize, well, most websites know me because I give them a username password that I use when I set up the account. And I'm supposedly the only one that knows that. And therefore, that's what authenticates me. You can think about when you use Pwn College and you SSH into the server. How does the server know that you're your user and I'm my user? Right. So that's part of authentication is who you are. What's your identity to the server? Now, that's different from authorization, what you can do, right? Each system is set up differently so that actually Pwn College knows when I create a module uh, or a dojo that um, I'm an admin of, I can actually see more data and more information than you can as just a user of the system. And this makes sense. This is how systems work in our daily lives. When you use something like uh, at ASU, currently we're using... Uh, we have this system called My ASU, where you as a student can see your grades, all that kind of cool stuff. Me as a professor can post grades. And so that's part of the authorization. Who can do what, right? Professors should be able to post grades and input grades, and students should be able to see grades. Students should not be able to see each other's grades, and they shouldn't be able to change their grade, right? So that's all part of... and. And you can see that that is actually critical to the security of the system, because if you're authorization and access control is incorrect and students can change their own grades, then what's the point of the system? You've basically created a really terrible system. Um, yeah, so authentication is about who are you? And then authorization is what can you do on the system? What actions can you take on the system? Um, and this is uh, related. There's a lot of related concepts in here of trust and risk. Uh, so you need to manage when you're thinking about a system at a high level, who can do what types of things on, on the system? What's the authorization that people have to do various types of things? And what type of trust is that? You can imagine a system like we said, well, hey, if we trust students to change their grade, then, you know, is that a good system? Is that a bad system? I'd probably argue that uh, it's not a sustainable system if students can just input whatever grades they want, but you may feel differently as a student, uh, depending on how you think about that. And the idea is what you want to do is set up the authorization, who can do what, and who do you trust to do what in order ultimately to manage risk. And what do we mean by risk here? Risk is basically the probability that something bad can happen. Um, and one of the key things I want you to think about through this is can you ever eliminate risk? And think about that while I take a sip of some tea. 
Okay. So maybe you've thought, hmm, can you eliminate risk in a system? Can you eliminate the ability for the risk of even, uh, and you can target specific risks, not just risk generally. So you can target risks of, hey, students shouldn't be able to change their grade. Uh, how do we reduce that probability? Well, one of the very first things we can do is use authorization and say, well, students in the system, if the system knows you are a student, you should not be able to change grades. That's one way of, of mitigating risk. Now you can say, but hey, what if something happens? What if a student was able to change their grade? Maybe they uh, break the authentication and are able to authenticate as a professor and then go into the system and change their grade. So the system thinks, oh, that's fine. That's an authorization. So other ways of eliminating risk are thinking about, okay, if that happens, how can I know that happens, right? How can I identify that this has happened? So this is actually where things like logging and audit logs come in where you want to be able to say, okay, if this thing happens, we want to be able to see that it happened and see what the grade was beforehand, because if we have no record of what the grade used to be, then that's going to cause a lot of problems. So fundamentally, we can't, uh, it, oops, sorry, uh, we can't eliminate risk in a system, we can only try to manage it and uh, reduce it as much as possible. And so when you're thinking about, so we've talked about various concepts, authorization, what can you do on the system? We're also talking about this module is about access control. And so the way I want you to be thinking about it is that authorization is the policy, that statement of who can do what on the system. Whereas access control is the mechanism that actually implements it. So for instance, on um, that, uh, that shared system, uh, that we were talking about with the example of the shared computer system, the policy should be that uh, the authorization policy should be, hey, students should not be able to read other students' homework files. Now, if we wanted to make a better access control mechanism such that student A couldn't ever make their files readable to other students, then that's something we can do with the access control mechanism, right? So mechanisms are things that enforce our policies and what we want to have happen. You can think of uh, one example of policies versus mechanisms is something like a door. So you have a policy on the door, but the lock itself is, and your policy is, hey, when I'm home or when I leave the house, I want to uh, make sure that nobody else can go into a, the house who doesn't have access. Well, how is access done in the physical world with a physical key that you lock the door? So you use the lock mechanism in order to prevent unauthorized people from accessing your house when you're there. So this is a high level of what I want to talk about here and set us up for the future of going forward for access control. So see you in the next video.